Today's video, we're going to create a particle system in Notch. Welcome back to the Hive School, where we help you one up your live event production workflows. When we started the Hive School channel, and even before that, when it was called Friday Sessions, we never intended for it to be so disguise dominated in terms of content. We set out to share skills that we'd learn running the Hive and tried to make one improvement in every video. While we've been focusing on enhancing aspects of the production that didn't come particularly naturally to us, like lighting and audio, keeping the subject matter familiar allowed us to stay focused. As you'll see, we've come a long way since our first videos. I definitely feel like we've got a lot more to learn about producing videos for the channel, but now feels like a good time to bring some more variety back to our subject matter. So with that being said, we're going to take a break from Disguise today, we're going to be looking at Notch. Now if this is your first time using Notch, you might want to check out our first day in Notch video to help you get set up. The link is in the description below. Working as a Notch artist represents a significant portion of our commercial work that we do at The Hive. Although I must admit, we're not really good at communicating that to the wider world. One of my favourite things to play with in Notch is the particle system. And if you've ever worked with tools like XParticles, you'll appreciate how crucial real-time rendering is for tweaking your simulations. When it comes to creating particle systems in Notch, there are essentially five main components. There's the particle root, and then a number of emitters, renderers, effectors, and shaders. If we look in the available nodes on the right-hand side of our screen, you'll see that Notch has color-coded all the particle nodes orange and grouped them by the main headings. Let's start by adding a particle root to our node graph. This will be the foundation of our particle system and contains information like the total number of particles and pre-roll time. Just if we need to add the particle root to the root node of our scene, all of the particle nodes that we add will need to connect to our particle root. Right now, we don't have any particles. In order to generate some, we'll need an emitter. We can press Ctrl R on the keyboard and Notch will parent our emitter to the particle root. If we were to press play in our scene right now, our viewport would remain black. And this is because although the emitter is producing particles, we haven't told Notch how to render them. So let's go ahead and add a point renderer. When we press play again, we can now see a white sphere of particles rendering in our viewport. Now that our particles are visible, it's much easier to understand the properties within these nodes and how they control behavior. For example, back in our primitive emitter, we can change, change its shape to different types of 3D primitives. Although, I'm going to keep this as a sphere for now. We can also adjust the size of our emitter by using the size parameter. However, if we want to change the size of individual particles, we need to go to the point renderer and adjust the particle scale. A crucial part of becoming a proficient notch designer is learning where the various parameters are located. Fortunately, Notch's documentation is exceptionally well written and you can instantly access the corresponding page in the user manual for any selected node by clicking the question mark icon at the top of the properties panel. Returning to our particle tutorial, what we've created so far is technically a particle system, however it's far from exciting or artistic. Zooming in, you'll notice that the point renderer is generating a white square for each particle. We can definitely enhance their appearance. Let's adjust our point renderer by increasing the size randomness, which will introduce some more variation in the size of our particles. Recall Armin from Notch advising to keep this value below 0.9, otherwise if you go any higher you risk computing particles that aren't visible. Speaking of Armin, if you haven't yet discovered his YouTube video or his example projects on Behance, then now's an excellent time to go and explore them. Links to both of those will be in the description below. He's a wizard when it comes to notch design, and he's been incredibly generous in sharing his resources, so I'd check him out. We can also modify the shape of the particles, double click in the resources panel to navigate to the notch folder in your documents. You'll find a folder with sample projects containing various resources. I'm going to import the file gradient circle B alpha. Set this in the texture parameter for a nice soft edged particle. Keep in mind that you're not limited to not providing resources. Watch as I set this picture of a duck to our particle texture. Pretty much any PNG or DDS file should work here, but remember Notch has to draw each particle individually, so keep your textures small and simple. 
Before we move on, I'm going to set our gradient back to our particle texture. With a particle system, the magic really starts to happen when we begin to apply forces to the particles. We do this with effectors. Let's drag a turbulence effector into our scene, again pressing Alt-R to link it to our particle root. Immediately you'll see our particles begin to move around. With the simulation playing, we can tweak our settings and get a live update of how they're affecting our scene. Let's increase the velocity amount in our turbulence effector. If we push a value too far, let's say by cranking our velocity up to 100, we can always hit the reset button on the second row of icons in the property panel, and that will restore it to its default value. If you make a bunch of changes to a node and want to totally start from fresh, there's a reset button above that which reverts the whole node back to its default. So don't be afraid to experiment, play with the values of your nodes and get a feel for which ones create something that feels truly artistic. As we said at the start of the video, there are five main categories of node in the notch particle system, and we've seen four of them so far. The last category is shading nodes, and the first particle shading node that most people learn is the life colour shading. Let's drag one in and see what it does. Inside the node, we have four colour pickers for colours that will be applied to our particles throughout their lifespan. If we check our primitive emitter, you'll notice a value of 5 in the life parameter. This means our particles will exist for 5 seconds before fading away, making room in the simulations for new ones to be born. Now let's head back to our shading node and set four colours to something complementary. As the playhead moves, we can observe how this affects our scene in real time. When discussing the different types of particle nodes, it's important to note that you're not limited to, to just one of each. You also don't have to use all five types either. When it comes to art directing your scene, you're in charge. To illustrate this, let's add a second renderer to our scene. This time we're going to drag in the trail renderer. You'll notice that our turbulence effector moves the particles around. This renderer will draw a trail. I do like this effect, but it's a bit overpowering to our point renderer, and that's getting lost. So to fix this, I'm going to navigate to the point renderer and increase our particle size until we can see it clearly alongside our trails. Right, time for some homework. Have a play with the not particle nodes and try adding some of the different types of effectors and renderers that are available. We've recently launched the Hive School Discord server and we'd love for you to upload what you've created into our show and tell channel. That's it for this tutorial on notch particle systems. We hope you've enjoyed patching along with us and if you feel like we've earned it, we'd love for you to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss future videos. The link to our new Hive School Discord server is in the description below. I'll be hanging out there along with the rest of the Hive School crew, ready to answer questions you might have about this video or any of the other tutorials you've seen on the channel. From everyone here at the Hive School, we'll see you next time. Thank you.